So at the bottom of page 37, he mentions a couple just quick points, which I think are incorrect, but I think it's worth discussing them. So he says, where freedom is real, equality is the passion of the masses. Where equality is real, freedom is the passion of a small minority. Equality without freedom creates a more stable social pattern than freedom without equality. So I think that's incorrect. And Hoffer doesn't offer any examples. Like m much of through this book, he does talk about some history to try to back up his points. But this particular, what I just read you, is the entirety of section 29. It doesn't list any other, any discussion, any footnotes, anything that he normally discusses in other points. So he's, he's seemingly saying these things as if they're obvious and they're not obvious to me. I think they're incorrect. So the first line, where freedom is real, equality is the passion of the masses. Now, this might be true, but it also might uh, be part of propaganda and manipulation of those masses, especially when masses of people tend to be economically illiterate and they don't understand economics and they get bullied or they get propaganda from certain political groups that try to rile them up, rile up the um, the rabble, as they're sometimes called. So, of course, where freedom is real, you have inequality. Why do you have that? Because human beings are different. It's not the cliche of, oh, people born into money keep the money. It's just simply not, also not factually true. Uh, tons of wealthy people lose money. Uh, I laugh out loud when people say, like, oh, Donald Trump got a million dollars. Tons of people got mil got a million dollars. None of them ended up as billionaires. Very, very, very few people who get a million dollars turn it into billions. So that's, la that's nonsense and just laughable. So there's no doubt that there's inequality. What happens is, though, that that is propagandized into the wealthy have stolen it or the, we or the wealthy um, didn't earn their money and it should be taken away. And then you get basically union groups and Alinsky-type thugs who want to go, and you hear them, you can find them all over the place, find them in the media, find them on YouTube. People who talk about basically coveting other people's goods, envious of wealthy people, they want to eat the rich. They're just modern day thugs. And if we lived in a backward society, they would be looters and they would be out taking people's stuff. So they're, they're peaceful in civilized society, but that rhetoric, if they could act on it, they would. So those people are just thugs. So yes, in a free society, you're going to have inequality. You're going to have wealthy people that got their wealth largely through their own efforts. Obviously, in some cases, you can get you can get lucky. You can win the lottery. But if someone wins the lottery, now they're a wealthy one percenter jerk. Like it, it's it's stupid. It's a it's a ridiculous you know association. So obviously, in a free society, you have inequality. The problem is is that the the masses of people tend to be envious of the productive and the entrepreneurial and the people who've taken a risk. And funny enough, they will point and blame at the, the, lucky few, the lucky wealthy few, but they seem to have very little sympathy for the bankrupt and the entrepreneurs and the small business people that took a chance, took a loan. What is it? Seven out of 10 businesses fail. And they don't seem to have much sympathy for them. They just point to the successful, but that's not the picture. Like, so it requires a little bit of study and some economic literacy. But unfortunately, a lot of people don't do that, so they get easily riled up. And then we have this situation of enviousness with the masses of the productive and the, the wealthy. So that's the first point. Where freedom is real, equality is the passion of the masses. So I, dis I think I've discussed why that is the case. The next point. Where equality is real, freedom is the passion of a small minority. So first of all, it would have been nice if Hoffer would provide a citation of where equality has been real in the world at any time in history. And as far as I can think, it has never been, equality has never been real. You've never had a society or a civilization that shared everything equally and had only a few of them had a passion for freedom in that context. Uh, there are there are some cases of equality. Uh, a prison is certainly a case of equality being real. You know, there's all kinds of examples of basically heavily, actually, what are technically called total institutions. If you look up the work of, um, it's a sociologist. I think his name is Goffer or something like that. 
uh, Goffman or some, something like that. Uh, there's if you look up just look up total institutions. That is can be example of where you'd where you'd have full equality or even like a nursing home, which is a kind of total institution. It, it's on a scale. Uh, but these are cases where you have a, equality is real. And tell me what kind of human beings function in such a state? Function in a place where everything is equal, but obviously when everything is equal, uh, you have enormous constraints on your behavior to make that so. Let's say it's a factory, and this factory, let's say it's, it's uh, sometimes they're called um, cooperatives. They're very rare, but they do exist. Cooperatives are function on a kind of communist system where he, everyone shares in the profits and they, everyone's supposed to run run it. There are no managers, there's no hierarchy. Uh, these things don't last very long, but um, it's built on this principle that tries to run on this principle, and they tend to break down. And uh, what happens is, of course, is that certain people do all the work. Everyone's been through public school. They know that you know some people some people will dread teamwork or group work, right? Because you end up doing all the work and people screw around. And this is what happens in, in adult life as well, just as it happened in school. That's why these things tend to break down because certain people are more uh, are less lazy or more ambitious, and they'll do more work. And of course, are they rewarded for it? No. So then they stop doing it. And then they get mad at the people that are slacking off. And this is what happens. This is the politics. And this is why these things break down. So where equality is real is very difficult to find unless it is a institutionalized environment. And then in an institutionalized environment, people tend to want to leave and get out of. And I think there's enough world history uh, to show that. So freedom is the passion of a small minority, maybe of, of guards and people who are, who are doing very well by the equality system. Uh, but it can't be at all something that works in practice because people will try to leave such a situation. Okay, so the last point, equality without freedom creates a more stable social pattern. The only way that could be true is if you believe in a total institution is something that is worthwhile. I don't know what human being, though, with an ounce of pride would live in such a situation and want to and not want to escape it. So the last point, equality without freedom creates a more stable social pattern than freedom without equality. So again, I think most people would prefer a a more free society because it allows for some room for growth and room for ambition and room for risk taking, unlike a a total institution where equality could be real. But you eventually but essentially you're in a cage. So I don't know why it would be nice if Hoffer had explained these points and provided some citations, but he, he just leaves it as one little section. And I think I've described in detail why I think these, this section is wrong.